The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. I'll tell you what, for weeks now, the message inside me hasn't changed. You know what that's usually an indication? We're not done yet. (laughs) Apparently, my style of teaching is always repetition on anything that has life on it. If you have to stick it in a sermon where the title is totally unrelated, do it anyway if it's still got life on it. And I'll tell you what, God is clearly, clearly speaking. Besides the fact that He's incubating, He's taking seeds, words of promise, incubating on them to birth in and through us the plans and the purposes of God. I want you to, I want to read from the, from the Didache, chapter 1, verse 1. That's not complicated, is it? There's only a few verses in the Didache in the first chapter. It's only six. <laughs> Chapter 1, verse 1. There are two ways, one of life and one of death. And there's a great difference between the two ways. There's a great chasm between the way of life and the way of death. We knew that from the Old Testament, though. Isn't it? There is a way that seems right unto a man. Okay? So it's not a new truth, but it's an essential truth because that was the first thing they would teach, a totally clueless generation of Gentiles. Jewish believers had to teach Gentiles who had no concept of any morality that when you begin, there's going to be two roads. One's the way of life. One's the way of death. And I believe that no matter how long you've been a Christian, I think we need to be reminded of that because have you felt lately that you've been played? Anybody feel like that? Anybody feel like you've been living in the matrix for a few months? (laughs) Anyone feel like you've been in some kind of an alternate reality? Things are strange. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so in reality, the the strategy, and you've heard this again and again, and I'm going to keep on repeating it until the next generation and my grandchildren repeat what I'm saying. There is a pattern that God operates he, everything is built upon a, a pattern based on principles, right? You have Proverbs, you have the Beatitudes, you've got patterns and principles of the ways God operates. And one of the most common ones that you will hear from this pulpit, you have heard uh, for years and years, is the one of the ways God works is He starts with divine appointments. Divine appointments. Divine appointments can become divine connections, If you cooperate and you deal with the stuff in you, it's hard to have a divine connection when you won't deal with the stuff in you. You don't really connect. You know people that you're around a lot and you don't feel like you can connect? There's something in between. All right? And God spoke to me this week. More and more I'm getting this in dreams. Bits and pieces I wake up and and then we go to our prayer time together with Jennifer and I. I have to write down pretty much what I got in the dream. But basically, he said, there's angels being assigned to you. I believe it's assigned to everybody. There's angels being assigned for you to fulfill your assignment. And by the way, that is one of the key words that you will hear a lot, assignment. Assignment, assignment, assignment. And these angels can fulfill your assignment because they hearken unto the voice of God and God's word is your assignment. Matter of fact, you know what? You're a word spoken from God. And that word goes forth. But God's saying, I want to make divine appointments become divine connections. I want to make some sentences. I don't care how anointed of a word you are as an individual. I'm about kingdom dynamics. I'm about bringing something together, creating. I'm a creator God. I want to create something. And I placed 
people in your life, divine appointments for divine connections, and the angels will assist in this, providing you deal with the barriers in you. If you say, I'm not a people person, you're definitely in the wrong church. All right? Because you will either become a people person or you're going to run. God's in the people business. Unless you're not in the God business, don't say I'm not a people person. That's something in you that needs to change because he made you that way. And he placed the solitary in families. Now, we go from divine connection. Come on, you note takers, because this should be memorized by my people. Divine appointments go to divine connections. Divine connections begin to formulate groups, families, relationships. On your job, there's certain people, a divine order. Who made that order? God. God has appointed the exact time and the exact place and you should live. God pointed that. So it's an order that he's doing if you cooperate with your assignment. Now, after that divine order, God releases a people who are not a people, a people prepared to accomplish divine purpose. There's a very simple outline, but I'll tell you what, there's more meat in that you could spend your entire Christian life reevaluating that to see to what degree you do. Because people have a tendency to substitute their assignment that came from God to something they want to do. I hear it a lot in the church. Oh, follow your dream, follow your dream. A lot of it's carnality. A lot of it is do what you want to do. Do what you think makes you happy. But if you want to know the purpose of a thing, never ask the thing. You go to the creator, the manufacturer, and let him tell you what your purpose is and what is your assignment. It's not what you like or dislike. It's basically what has God called you to do because God made you. And if he made you, he made you with a purpose. Amen. Now, here's something that the Lord did when I was half awake. This wasn't quite the dream. This was after I woke. He said, Dennis, you've taught that for a long time. He said, but I think they need to be warned of the other thing. If you don't fulfill the assignment that God has called for you, the devil will give you another assignment. And you will have, instead of a divine appointment, you'll have a toxic appointment. People strategically placed, based on your weaknesses, to put into your life, to basically abuse and use, distract you from the divine purpose. So there's a toxic appointment, just like there's divine appointments. We have a book on soul ties. You can learn about that. There's quality relationships and knittings, and then there's knittings that are toxic. Well, there's toxic connections then, right? The third element was a divine order. There's also a toxic order that takes on a life of itself. I knew... Uh, Kids that were raised without a mom and dad a lot of times joined gangs in South Chicago when I was young. That became a toxic family. It, it felt the need, but it, who, who's really was supplying that need? See, if you don't get a need met righteously, you will get it met unrighteously. There's no, there's no vacuum in your life. You will get those needs met, and they'll either be righteous or unrighteous. So... They, they got wrapped up in a, in a toxic order. And actually, you know, in a gang, they called it your family. I don't have a mom or dad, or my mom and dad didn't raise me properly. But in the gang, we have a family. Is that God's divine order, you think? Hmm? Of course not. It's toxic. So there's a divine appointments, there's toxic appointments. There's divine connections, there's toxic connections. God's got a divine order. A placement, a family, relationships, jobs, uh, a, to live in a certain place, to be among certain people, even your neighborhood. God has appointed, according to Acts, the exact time and the exact place in which you should live. Therefore, you're responsible for that placement. And you can either ignore it and go your own way, or you can pursue God. Now, with that toxic order or lifestyle, you could call it. Drug culture has a toxic lifestyle. 
And you know what? They all talk the same language. There's a commonality. They think, I know I did, when, before I was saved and I did drugs, I thought I can handle it. Those was famous last words for alcoholics and drug addicts. I can handle it. Huh? And you actually think you're doing what you want to do. But what does the scripture say? You were in disobedience under the principality of the power of the air. You thought you were doing what you wanted to do, but someone else was controlling. This gets right back to the Didache, doesn't it? There's two ways. There's the way of life and the way of death. And you know what? The way of death can look good and not be God. And what I want to talk about today is divine purpose, your divine assignment. And of course, there's a toxic assignment for the ones who choose not to do their divine assignment. There's, two, there's only two roads, so don't get all... Uh, heady on the gray areas and it's not a mystery Proverbs 20 verse 5 counsel in the heart of man is like water in a deep well but a man of understanding draws it out what's that saying is if you want to know the purpose of a thing don't ask the thing go to the Creator and it's like deep water. You really want to know what God has for you? He has an assignment. And you know what? I want to speak to, particularly to those people that are watching on, on YouTube or Facebook. I don't care how bad you messed up. This, you know, we call God omniscient, all-knowing. He is so smart. It's kind of an understatement. God is so smart. He is so smart. He can get you back on track if you were to humble yourself and go to him and say, God, it's your assignment. I've avoided your assignment and I did what I wanted to do. I searched in many different areas. Matter of fact, that's how I got saved. I tried everything thinking someday something that brings me pleasure, totally selfish, is going to jump off the page whether it's in a magazine or a newspaper or whatever, and I'm going to go, yeah, that's it. But you know what? It doesn't work that way. No, that is the futility of life apart from God. And God's basically saying, until a purpose is discovered, your existence has no meaning. Ouch. Until your purpose is discovered, your existence has no meaning. And I can still remember the vision God gave me, and it was a kind of a silly vision, uh, and, it, and it really dates me. But I had a football game that was electric. It was a metal green playing field with a, with a little, like, and you had the little football players, and you'd line them up facing each other, and you'd turn the power on, and the, the board would vibrate, and the little players would go like this. You know, most of the time they didn't run with the ball down the field like they were supposed to. They would start to, and then the next thing, they'd go, what, he's going to the sidelines, what's, what's wrong with that? But anyway, that was the best technology we had at that point in time. We're talking 50s, all right? Give me a break. So anyway, but the Lord used that very illustration with me when he showed me people searching that they could be busy, and they'll say things like, oh, I'm getting there. Ask them, where's there? See, until God gave me purpose, I didn't get the big picture and say, oh, wow, that's it. No, he gave me two, just like the Apostle Paul. He gave me some of the same scriptures. He basically said that Jesus would be formed in me that I might preach. Isn't that interesting, the order? First, get Jesus formed in you, then preach. Sometimes we want to preach without Jesus being formed in us. Then you really don't have anything to say because you haven't heard anything. Right? And he, he got me on that one too. He said, Dennis, quit talking. Listen. I think that was God. It might have been my mother. My mother used to say, you know, if you just listen, you might learn something. You know, mothers say cool stuff too, right? All right. But that's, this is the main thing is that it... The, 
I know the plans that I have for you, so uh, I want to speak to those that have been troubled by the circumstances. You've been sidetracked and distracted, and that's the intent of the enemy to do that. That this is the worst time to lay down your assignment. This is the worst time. But it could be the best of times if you say, I'm going to choose my assignment regardless of the craziness around me. It's a beautiful background, actually. That kind of craziness might encourage you to trust God more. A more implicit trust in God's a good thing, isn't it? Huh, yeah. So, until purpose is discovered, your existence really has no meaning. And purpose, or your assignment, is actually the source of fulfillment. Is there anybody who says, I don't want fulfillment? <laughs> you don't want fulfillment. I just want to do it my way. I want to be a crabby, sour puss who has a better idea all the time. You know, those know-it-alls are not happy people. I want to give you a clue. All right? And when I looked back, because I only had one purpose, that I might know him, that I might progressively become more intimately acquainted, Philippians 3.10, that was my railroad track scripture. And only doing that, when I look back, it looks like my life was planned. Some of you think you're smarter than God and you can plan it. It's far better to just do John 7:17. 7, you know what that is? You have that memorized, right? Everybody here. All right. If you will do His will, you shall know. If you want to do His will, you will know. You have to first be willing to do His will without knowing. Then you will know. Some of you are stubborn. You want God to tell you everything, and then maybe I'll do whatever you tell me. That's not going to work. First, you've got to be willing to know, then he reveals. He doesn't just reveal himself to anybody. He reveals himself to those who seek him. I know the plans that I have for you. What's that saying? Who knows? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, then if I really want to know what's going on, I've got to go to God. Mm-hmm. Is he your creator? Yes. If you want to know the plans that I have for you, plans for welfare, not calamity, to give you a future and a hope. I'll tell you what, there's people that are hopeless right now. You're only telling me you're not, a part, you're, you're not participating in your assignment. You're not pursuing your assignment. You're looking at circumstances. You're being drawn away by the confusion. The confusion is the perfect place for God to create something beautiful. Out of the chaos, he creates beautiful. He's a creative God. He's Elohim, the creator God. 100% creativity. 100% power and might. And God's basically saying, the original intent for creating a thing, that's your purpose. Your original intent. Don't you think it's time we got back to original intent? Because the world is distorting our constitution. They're distorting everything and actually original intent. Even some of the things that they're saying about our Constitution, they have destroyed original intent and found a way to work around it. They found a way to work around God's original intent for you and I, individually, to take, and God has prepared actually at this time, I really believe, a training program utilizing the Didache and what he taught with the first century church who people who went from total confusion and unknown to salvation in the Messiah to the point to where they finally got a standard to live by. And in that obedience, they turned the world upside down. Amen. And he's not going to give authority to somebody who's not willing to do the assignment. Amen. So the original intent for the creation of a thing, your very reason for existence and the destination of our journey. The nature of purpose. Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in a person's heart. You, you ever get ideas? <laughs> you ever make plans? You make plans for a picnic and it rains? All right. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Even if you don't do it, he doesn't change. He created you with a purpose. When a manufacturer creates a product, the intended use 
the design, the function, the nature. I mean, when God creates a man and a woman, He designs them to fulfill their function. You are the way you are because of the why you are. <laughs> You're designed for a purpose. You are perfect for your purpose. Oh, we've got some perfect people here already. You are perfect for your purpose. I love that. I saw more people getting emotional healing when I would say, you're a one of a kind. There never was another you. There never will be another you. And I've watched people with tears falling down their face. When we would go church to church, they, they struggled in their identity until you realize your uniqueness. You don't have to be a copy of somebody else. You were born an original. You don't want to die a copy, do you? God basically made you a one of a kind. And you are perfect for that purpose. Your birth is evidence that your purpose is necessary. <laughs> I can prove it. You're here. As long as you're here, you're living proof that you have a purpose. Because God didn't say, I'm going to make some people with purpose and I'm going to make a whole bunch of uh, nothings. Yeah, a bunch of nobodies with no purpose, no, no go, no, yeah. Just some pawns. Just something to move around on the earth. No, you're a one of a kind. There never was another you, never will be. Purpose might incorporate a lot of minor little things, but when I look back, I saw how God, in hindsight, you see the wisdom. Nobody has the whole plan laid out in advance. You have some specifics and you have some general concepts. But in reality, obedience, it says, I know the plans that I have for you, and you will seek me and find me when you would. Search for me all your heart. And it was not like he's hiding or trying to make it hard. He's looking for a heart attitude that will take more than a casual relationship. Can you imagine two people getting married and saying, well, you know, we're together now. You know, why don't you go live in the other part of the house? I'll live in this part of the house. And then for meals, we can meet together, maybe, depending. It's not a business proposition, is it? Relationship is supposed to be for the purposes of God, to exemplify God. Let two or three exemplify. Little Pentecosts. In twos and threes. And I'm convinced the power of God in these days, I've already received the seed. He's incubating on unity and relationships to birth something. Now, purpose is actually interdependent. Oh, these, here, now we're going to mess with the people who don't need people. All those people that are so good, they don't need other people. Unfortunately, the only thing you can do as a rugged individual is you could be successful by the world standard. There are rugged individuals successful by the world standards because they walked over people to get there. But your purpose, your assignment by God always includes people. Destiny always includes relationships. Always, always, to fulfill your assignment, you need people. And you need to be in, in what? Not the toxic ones. <laughs> you need to be in the right relationship. You know what? Check your friends out. Do you hang with overcomers or are you very comfortable with unsaved people? Are you very comfortable with lukewarm, compromising Christians? I mean, we've got people that call themselves Christians and they're, they're, they're sleeping together, they're not married, they're, and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're calling themselves Christians. That, for me, that's a Christian in name only. It's time that that nonsense is knocked off because God's not going to bless that. Isn't that interesting that the early, early church used that Didache to take these Gentiles where they were taught that that's okay, everybody's doing it, 
and they said there's a right way and there's a wrong way. This is the way of life and this is the way of death. Killing babies is wrong. Aborting babies is wrong. And they had to adjust because that was their culture. It was okay. Isn't that interesting? Those are baby Christians knew better. And here's the wrong way. This is the way of death. This is the way of life. I don't see how you can be a Christian and be pro-abortion. To me, that makes absolutely, that's a lie. You're coming against God's standard. I don't care who's running for office. I'm talking about a platform. If you can vote for that platform, there's something seriously wrong with you. There's something wrong. There's a heart problem. I have a hard time with someone who is very easy with killing babies, uh, giving me a lecture on any other topic. It's kind of like I kind of, you know, I consider the source. Don't talk to me about guns. You kill babies. You know, I can't. It doesn't compute. So, and I've heard all the arguments because, matter of fact, Jennifer and I both, when we were unsaved, we had the arguments. I know what those arguments are. It doesn't hold water. You have an assignment. There's a right way and a wrong way. I'm going to give you seven principles. This is from the, uh, not so much for notes, but just to impact your spirit. So, okay, I want these to be like arrows, and I want them to bombard me and hope some of them stick. Are you ready? Here's seven arrows as far as your assignment. God is a God of purpose, and everything he does has a purpose. Ow. I got stuck with that one. God is a God of purpose, and everything he does has a purpose. Everything in your life has a purpose. Ignorance of purpose does not cancel the purpose. Let's go slow on that one. Ignorance of the purpose does not cancel the purpose. Because that was put in you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So it's not canceled out just because you're acting ignorant. Just because you thought you had a better idea. Doesn't cancel the purpose. But I believe that what God called us to do to make ready a people prepared, that was my calling. This is my my assignment. Is so that there are fewer and fewer people who on their tombstone says, here lies a person with great potential. What does potential mean? means you haven't done it. But you are created with an assignment, but you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. It's not a casual walk in the park. It's not something that just falls out of the sky. It's something that you pursue. He's not hiding from you. He's hiding for you. But he wants you to look for him. Not every purpose is known, and it's true. Many never discover their purpose. Not every purpose is known. Well, how do I know what the purpose is? It's the same answer all the time. Seek him and obey him, and step by step, you will discover it. Right now, there's a, there's a, a false prophetic voice that says, follow your dream. Everyone's an entrepreneur. Everyone's got their own business. They never work for anybody, but they got their own business now. Uh, They've never learned people skills, and they're trying to succeed. I'll tell you what, if they would have found their assignment in God, and by the way, God's in the people business. Oh, there it goes again. I I can't love God and hate these people. And I can't use that excuse, I'm not a people person. Son of a gun, that kind of undermines my plan. Yeah, it is. There's a way that seems right, but the end is death. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Because I don't believe in vacuums. You will get needs met righteously, 
or unrighteously, but you will get that need met. If you have a need for safety, security, finances, or something, you're going to find a way. You will have that need met righteously in God, or you will find a substitute. And here's the interesting thing. God is saying, I'm sending my angels to fulfill the assignment that I have for you. So you've got help. But they hearken unto the voice of the word. They will not function if you've got issues in your heart that are blocking. They remove the blockages that prevent you from being all that you could be and doing all that you could do. But they will not. Actually, if you've got a blockage in your heart, you know what? You might think it's the devil. It could be God resisting you. He resists the proud, and he gives grace to the humble. Perhaps if you won't deal with that internal thing, the block is in you. How many people would get tremendous breakthrough if they even could learn to get to the point where they'd forgive themselves? You're not that great. Apart from him, you can do nothing. It might be, <laughs> that might be the best prayer you ever prayed. I am not so great. God is great. And apart from him, I can do nothing. Might be the beginning of a flourishing, abundant life. So forgive yourself when you, when you beat yourself. Any Christian that beats themselves for their performance has got a pride problem. Inferiority, superiority, even the pride of sophistication. Is that a new one to you, the pride of sophistication? That's the name dropper. I used to have people come to me that I don't, they were just barely saved and totally a basket case emotionally. And they'd say, Hi, I'm new at your church, but I know everything there is to know. I'm spiritual. I went to Rod Parsley's church, or I went to Kenneth Hagin's church, or I went. That's not telling me nothing if you're a basket case. I'd say, deal with your stuff. I don't care where you went to church. And I don't care if you think you know everything and you're so spiritual because most of the people that have to flaunt their spirituality aren't. Who are the only people that didn't get powerful ministry when we traveled church to church? We never went to a church where we didn't see people's lives changed. Except for the ones that go, I, I already know that. Come on, some of our phone appointments are like that, right? They call in, they want, they want prayer coaching. And you say, forgive. And they hang up. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you even suggest forgiveness to some people, you are the enemy. You are an evil person, even merely suggesting that I should forgive. This is what's out there, people. I'm not exaggerating. This is very common. You ask anyone that has to deal with, uh, uh, on the phone with Christians in general around the world, you run into some very bizarre stuff. How dare you say I need to forgive? And then other ones will say something like, and this is my favorite one, oh, I already, I already forgave. I just, I just learned to live with the pain. <laughs> you learned to live with the pain. You didn't forgive. Forgiveness is the only supernatural event where God takes the pain and the sorrow and your evidence that you forgave is peace. You can't get saved without making peace with God. If you don't, if you, that's why you, some people say the salvation prayer every week. Because <laughs> they never got peace the first time or someone didn't show them that when you get peace, you've got it. There's a transaction took place. I think we need a transaction this morning on our assignment because God's saying, I'm not messing no more with, with, with snowflakes and baby Christians. If you, baby Christians are beautiful if they're hungry and thirsting for God. But I've got a, if you're 20 or 30 years in the church and you're a baby Christian, it's not cute. We get a little baby and we see them spit up and we go, oh, how cute. But if it's a teenager does it, we go, oh, is that gross, Right? <laughs> There's certain things that are cute when you're a baby, but it's not cute after you've been around for a while. Now, if you want to know the purpose of a thing, and you hear this all the time, don't ask the thing. Ask the person who created, designed it. When you 
do navel staring and figure yourself out. You might be very proud of how smart you are, but you are not the creator. You will come up with something that is actually quite weird. Huh? If you want to be searched, be God searched, not man searched. And that includes you searching. God searched, not man searched. Search me, O oh God, and see if there's any anxious thoughts or hurtful. Go to the one that made you if you're going to ask for instruction instead of somebody's clever opinions. God's basically saying, if you want to know the purpose of a thing, don't ask the thing. Created things don't know what was in the mind of the Creator unless they pursue Him. Creatures can never, never know purpose apart from the Creator. Purpose is only found in the mind of the Creator. Only God knows the purpose for your life. And purpose is the key to fulfillment for life. Purpose dictates performance, which determines satisfaction. And apart from purpose, life is haphazard, and the events of life become more important than the reasons behind them. The priority of purpose in your life is you know if you're going to build a house, or if you're going to build a ministry, or if you're going to build a business, the builder's going to want to know, what do you have in mind? What is the intent? Are you going to build a beauty shop? Okay, then you're going to want X amount of electricity here. You're going to want this kind of a shape business. You're going to want an entry place where they come in. You're going to want chairs. You know, I mean, it's just common sense. They're not going to build something without knowing what is the reason for the building. God says, I've got a reason for what I built. And actually, you know what? Something that, again, in a dream, God reminded me that all Scripture is profitable for instruction, for correction, and for edification or to build you up. And then God reminded me, do you know that each and every one of us when God spoke us into existence, he spoke to himself and said, let us create man in our image. That when he spoke, he spoke you forth as a word. A word specifically designed with a specific purpose or assignment. And God is basically saying that I'm raising up a people now, kind of a harvest of harvesters who are going to be balanced enough and founded enough to not be confused by the many voices. Isaiah said there's a voice that comes from the city, there's a voice that comes from the temple, and there's a voice of God. I always thought that was interesting. The voice of God might not be the voice that's coming from the temple. But there is the voice of God, the voice of religion, you could say, and there's a voice of the noise in the city. What voice are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to his voice. And he knows the plans that he has for you. They're plans for welfare, not calamity, to give you future and a hope. But we're going to have to get to a place of consecrating ourselves because design, the way God designed you, he designed you perfectly for your standard. And keep in mind, everybody's not, uh, doesn't have this specific uh, calling that is so easy to define. Because in reality, God wants to make sentences. And He spoke you as a word. And He doesn't care how anointed of a word you are. He still wants to make sentences. And you can't be a sentence all by yourself. You need other people. And he wants to make sentences and paragraphs. He wants to make a statement to principalities and powers through His church. Ephesians 3.10 That He might declare the wisdom of God through his church, through his assembly, through his congregation, to principalities and powers. Look at, look at my church, corporate. Um, uh, a rainbow of splendor 
and beauty. It's actually the same word that God used to say he divides asunder. He separates out soul from spirit, joints and marrow. He's a discerner of thoughts. and That word is marismos in the Greek. It divides asunder. But he doesn't quit by dividing asunder and say, this is good, this is evil. He said, this is good, this is evil. You choose. You choose good. He puts it back together again to make it something that can be displayed beautifully to principalities and powers. He wants to brag on the church. He wants to say, there's my bride. But it wants it to be without spot or wrinkle. Your priority is that you've got to know I'm being built what? For what? What is your assignment? Your assignment ultimately is what God told me I would wait many years to see in its, in its maturity. And that was first, people deal with their individual identity. Secondly, uh, some of them quit when they find out what their gifting is. Then they're just a gift going somewhere to display themselves. But the third element was a people who are not a people are going to become a people. There is a corporate identity. And those that are mature enough and secure enough as an individual will learn interdependence and actually fulfill the purposes of God or the assignment of God. To be, even if it's two or three, it will be a little mini Pentecost of unity where two or more gathered, I'm going to demonstrate in the midst. And I believe there's going to be Pentecost all over the world bursting forth in small groups of people that learned to get along with one another. They knew that this person was assigned to be them. Obviously, husband and wife is an assignment, right? But two or three are gathered together. It's going to be small numbers that come together who have said, we're in agreement with the assignment. We could do that here this morning with the numbers that we have here. We could do what that song suggested. Let's pray over our nation. What you can do by yourself is wonderful, but when God puts an assignment together in a corporate group of people, if one can chase a thousand to ten thousand, why is there multiplication? Why isn't it just addition? Because God said, I'm trying to make something bigger and better. I want you to become part of something bigger than you, yourself, and I. <laughs> you, yourself, and I. Me, myself, and I. All right? So, God wants to build for what? He designed is perfect for whatever it is. And the design predicts its potential. So, how many of you got scriptures when you first got saved that were kind of like you're still with you? There, there's, a, there's a definition in there that you need to pursue God because he's trying to define it. He said, I want that scripture, that little indication has in it a nugget of the design. You know, we don't see it when it's the acorn, we see it when it's the big oak tree. But nonetheless, everything necessary for that oak tree is in it. Everything necessary for you to fulfill your assignment is in you. Let's remove the roadblocks. Let's, and how do we do that? Is I want angelic host to basically cause us to fulfill our assignment and remove the roadblocks, and they'll gladly do that, but make sure that there's no roadblocks in us relationally. So, Father, I want to pray. Cleanse us from toxic appointments. Guard our hearts and our minds from unhealthy relationships. They will come at a time of need in your life. And they will appear as a solution. Good is not God. They will appear good. Toxic relationships. They will desire to make a connection. I remember the first toxic relationship that I got into as a believer was someone who did a lot for me. And it was a trap. It was like, well, I don't have the money to do that, but every time I have a need, they do it for me. Oh, that was nice, wasn't it? Until I got the inner witness that that's a setup. It wasn't a healthy relationship. 
but you thought it was benefiting you. Is that the way traps work? Toxic relationships, appointments, and the devil's going to send people your way. You've got to know the difference. You've got to know, is this something that would make me feel good? This would be good for me? Or is this part of an assignment to accomplish the purposes of God? Big difference. That's why people are following their dreams, following my dream. Most of those dreams are what you want. You didn't hear from God. And I don't listen to everybody who says, God said. I look at the ones who will bounce that opinion off of healthy people. Most of the people that are on their own that do God's told me, God said, never bounce it off of anybody else and don't want to bounce it off of anybody else because they want what they want. But that's using the Lord's name in vain if you know you've got mixed motive. My design is perfect for my purpose. Your design is perfect for your purpose. If you know the purpose of a thing, you know what it can do. So let's pray right now. I want to break all the toxic. We know divine appointments, divine connections, divine order, relationships for divine assignment. Let's cleanse ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit to put our spiritual antenna and make it bright. Cause me to discern toxic appointments. And if you're already at the stage of toxic connections, cleanse me from any unrighteous attitude in my heart. <clears throat> toxic clicks. You can have these at work, you know little toxic cliques, there are those that are mature and there's those, if you want to know something wrong, you go to them. You probably need to stay away from them. Remember the story I told you about my first pastorate? I was in a circle and I would say, if you want to know the dirt about something, who would you go to? And the whole church looked inward toward one person. You don't want to be that person. <laughs> you don't want to be the person that's in the know unless you have a redemptive solution. You're part of the problem. Father, we break toxic appointments. We break it by praying and receiving forgiveness for any appointment that it's not a godly relationship. Any attraction for connection, I receive forgiveness for tolerating the attraction. Thirdly, I need to be around people that are overcomers. I need to bounce some of my decisions off of people who are living in victory, not people in the same situation as me. People that are living in victory. And lastly, in your wisdom, God, get me back on my assignment. If that's really what you want, I want you to stand up with me. I want to get back to my original assignment. And yes, God is smart enough to get you back there. Regardless of how you may have strayed. And I want, to, I want you to pray for your friends because some of this, yes, it applies to you, but you're also picturing other people where you know that this is happening. And it grieves you and you feel like part of your heart's being ripped out from you because of relationships. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I'm releasing anointing to just flow, to push back the powers of darkness around these people. Push back that they might make a free will decision. Jennifer prays like this every morning for uh, uh, a dozen or so people that you would push back the powers of darkness from around them, that they could make a free will decision. There is too much ungodly influence from the world, the flesh, and the devil all around. Ungodly influence. Father, we want them to fulfill their destiny, to fulfill their assignment. There needs to be, there needs to be a freedom to choose. And so, Father, right now, there it is. There's an anointing right now to, to break toxic relationships. <clears throat>
There's people that are living together and calling themselves Christians. You need to get out of that relationship. Get out of that relationship or get married. But don't call yourself a Christian and don't go from place to place looking for a handout because that's usually the procedure. You're looking to see what people can do for you when you won't walk the walk. You have to learn to stand on your own two feet. There's people right now that are watching that if they're just like the Gentiles in the first century church. Your moral standard has nothing to do with the Bible. You, it's of your own making. And you think it's okay. And God says, you'll never fulfill your assignment. That blockage has to be removed in you before you're free to perform the purposes and the intent that God made you to fulfill. And remember, only you can fulfill your purpose. There never was another you. There never will be another you. We don't want to see you die and say, here lies a person who had great potential, but they never did anything with it. Find out the purposes of God for your life right now and get on fire because God's going to put a flame in your heart once you desire to search for him with all your heart. He's going to make known to you things that you've not seen, things that you've not heard, because those secret things belong to them that love him. He reveals them to those that love him. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.